Hi, and welcome to the last day of the first week of Art with Emily. Um, today we're going to be focusing on a still life. So I have found this lovely frog from digging around the flat and I thought he'd be perfect for our first still life. He's quite flat, so it makes it a little bit easier. He's also made of plastic, so it catches the light, which is good, so we can have a little play with light and dark. Um, and so what I've done is I've taken a photo so that that will be on the screen so you can see me draw at the same time as seeing the image. So you can go alongside me drawing. So all you'll need is like normal, a pencil and paper. Try and stay off those devices. We, we want to try and be as tactile as possible. Um, and yes, we're going to begin now. So I'm going to be working from still life. I just want to run through a couple of hints and tips to start with. So when I look at an object, I try and look at the relationship between the different components. So if I'm looking and if I'm going to start with the leg, for example, I would then look at what is in relation to this point here. So I can see that this point is in line with this joint here, as an example. And I can see also that this point where we finish his head is about halfway along this curve. So that, those are the kind of reference points that I'm going to be talking through as we go through the drawing. And in the second half, we're going to do something a bit more abstract, which will be fun. So I've put my frog down so I can see him. And I'm going to start with the leg. So as I draw my leg, I'm going to curve it downwards. So I've got a nice gentle curve. It has got a point at one end um, and the point we actually come, we come over the curve and it starts to curve back down. So I'm going to rub out that upper, upper point there. At this bottom end, it has a flattened line that connects this curve to the bottom. The bottom edge is just a flat line going all the way across. So we talked about proportions and how we, it's good to relate things to each other. So if I go back to my frog and I'm looking how far along the line is his hip. Hip? Probably a hip. Kind of a hip. Um, and it's just past halfway. So it's very, very nearly halfway. Um, so if I take half of, or I take where this stops, and I map it out to there, oh, put my frog down, and then I come a little bit in, so this, this section here is a little bit shorter, then I'll, that's where I finish my line. This line comes inwards, this comes up at an angle. And again, I can have a think about where do, where does, where is the relationship? So this point here is about just more than a third of the whole leg. So if I'm, if this is the top of my leg, one, two, three, so this is my third along here, be just higher than this. So it's going to be about that thickness. And then this, so this comes and bends round. That's my first leg, my first section. What I now need to do is I need to give the rim of that. So I'm just gonna do another line all the way around, mirroring what I've already got. I am then going to look at the points of the head. So we talked about how the join of where the head is is about halfway in from this section. 
So we've got about halfway point is about there. So I'm just gonna pick it, put a little marker. And the point where this bends, so this bended bending point is in line with the join at the top of the head. So I'm just gonna, oh, whoops. I'm just gonna put a line upward so that I can use that as a reference point and I can take that out. So this is this line. I'm going across and I'm going slightly upwards because that's how he looks. And I'm also going to then look at how, how does that relate to the leg. So there isn't much of a gap between the leg and the head. So I have a line about, about that distance. This line then is parallel to this one. And so we go upwards like that. In terms of the thickness, the head is thicker than the leg, and we can see that we have that, which is good. When we hit the line, we bend. And we bend downwards. And when we bend downwards, that has to go past the leg. So we're going to come to about this point here. I might want to adjust that slightly so it's a little bit bigger. So we can adjust as we go. We're then going to look at the bottom jaw. So this comes, it starts from actually a little bit lower. So we take this bended point there and we start just above it. And that basically, it does have a bend, but it's the bend is very subtle <clears throat> and doesn't affect the top line very much. So we have a straight line that goes all the way to meet the top jaw. And then we have a bottom line and the bottom line curves. So we curve down. And that curves down to the line. So this, this bend is actually more at that angle. So the top one was at this angle, the bottom one is at this angle. So we're gonna come to the down to the line and then it's going to curve so it's going to start a little bit lower than that. It's going to go like this. In the middle, we should see already that this goes, this kind of creates the two lines going away from each other. So I'm just gonna take out some of the lines around that I don't need anymore. Like either just they were more helpful at the beginning, perhaps construction lines or accidents because we all make accidents. Fantastic. So, I need to add in a few more lines. I need 
need to look at where this pops out on this side. So it's going to hopefully pop out the right place. So this wants to go like this all the way through. So your pencil really help you guide where it's going to come out. And that's right, because we want it to come out just above this, this flattened point. So you can put a little marker there and it's going to continue at the same angle. We then want the other line at the top to also trace through. So you can double check. Does that work? Does that come through? Yep, yeah, that line's good. Does this one come through? Maybe that wants to be a little bit lower. Minuscule amount. And then we can see that it actually bends a little bit at the edge. So it bends inwards and then comes down. We can also see, um, so when, if we look back at, we can see that this is actually, we have a flat point here and in the image we can see slightly the other side of it. So we need to put a second a line here and actually a little bit higher than that. So the thickness, a little bit wider than the thickness of this line here. And then that comes round and then disappears and joins up at the point here. And it does a similar thing on this side. So that joins like this. And we see a very slight hint of it over the top. We then need to have in the other leg because we can see that from the other side. So that is almost at the point of where, almost touching this line up here and it comes across horizontally and then it bends down and joins up. Basically the end of it is where the bend of the other one is. bits we have to put the screw in that goes through the head so we can see here there are some screws luckily we only see one as we look through it and that one is um, it comes about the screw actually is slightly behind what we're calling the hip so we come like this so we have two parallel lines we, it comes through the bottom and joins up there, which is good, but it means that maybe we need to just drop that a millimetre. And then at the top, it comes either side like that. We do slightly see the other side, just like the legs, we see it at the top as well. Um, it bends round past this bend, so a little bit further along. It tucks behind this, and this means that we need to bring this down a bit, so it's not as deep as that. And then it continues as a straight line and tucks behind. Final bit of this construction is the eye. So. The eye starts basically where this ends, so where the screw joins here at the top, give yourself a little mark and then we're doing an angled line upwards, so whoop, keep dropping my pencil, like that. We then need to bring that downwards towards the head and we want a little line. So do the little line and then continue the line downwards to make sure that um, it's far enough. 
And actually looking at that, I don't think mine's big enough. Um, I, need, I look at this bend and I think it needs to be about here, the little line. Um, so make your adjustment with me. So we're going to go like, we're going to make the little mark. We're going to come up. It's actually a large portion of the head. Um, it's almost, I'm looking, I sometimes close one eye just to make it a little bit easier. It's not quite half of the head, but it's slightly less than half of the head. And I think that the half of the head is this. So maybe it needs to be slightly less than that. And we might want to bring it up a bit. Ooh, where's my brother? There we go. And we have a little dome for the eye, like that. So that was quite a construction. Quite, there's lots of little components to consider. So. To, if you are struggling with some of the lines, then I would ignore the doubling up lines and just focus on the flat surfaces that we can see. Um, what we're now going to do is we are going to put in a little bit of shadow with our pencil just to introduce how we can start to shade things. So um, I'm going to focus on the darkest points and these are the shadows within the frog. So we can see it going all the way around inside there and also in here. Um, so, first thing is how to shade. So when we shade, we're gently taking our pencil. It's a little like coloring in, but we don't want to be on our point. We don't want to be, because it will become really dented and it's really, oh, easy to see the pencil lines and we don't want to see the pencil lines so we're on this we're more on the side and we're being more gentle and if you want to you can move your pencil in circles to try and blend it together more easily or you can just gently nudge nudge the lines you're making together to try and blend blend them so we're going to look at this part here and i'm gently just got my pencil quite on the side and I'm making the darkest point at the edge because that's where it is and then it gets lighter as we as we come more towards the center and if you're trying to be really light then you can actually do one stroke after the other and it will make it a lot easier rather than like this we can layer lines next to each other and it will it will be a lot lighter and more realistic so I'm going to do that towards the edge of it and then I'm going to darken I'm then going to come and do the same thing on this side And this whole section is quite dark. And you can start to see how it makes it into a realistic frog. That I'm classic frog. So I'm going to leave the shading there for now. It's a very small intro to shading. Um, if you're really enjoying it, then I challenge you to find all of the darkest points and continue that theory and then send me your artwork afterwards because I'd love to see it. But what we're now going to do together is we're going to go onto the more abstract version of our lovely frog. And we are going to draw the frog in triangles only. So just to recap, 
are triangles. They're going to be different shapes and versions, and they're going to be in, obviously in this kind of general geometric triangle shape. And they're going to be big. So we're going to start with the leg like we did before. And this is abstract, so it doesn't have to be as abstract. So that is my first triangle to give this general shape here. My next triangle I'm going to give to give this this so we have that kind of general shape. I then need a really long triangle here. Ooh, let me just redraw that one. So I got that nice shape there. I'm going to give my, um, I'm going to finish that off by having that second triangle there. And then I'm going to do the one behind. So that's going to, I'm going to leave it there because I think it's meant to be abstract, so it's meant to be a bit funkier. My jaw, I'm going to have one long, and then I'm going to do, a, this one is a bit more complicated, so I'm going to do that first for the edge. And then I'm going to bring one all the way in. <laughs> he looks hilarious. And finish it off like that for the jaw. I need this little guy on the side and that pops out the back almost like a little, a little tail. The screw is going to come through as a triangle and then I'm going to have a triangle for the eye. One triangle like that and then a second one like that. So you can see it's not at all is detailed, but it's a really fun way to represent it because it gives a completely different personality. It's almost gone from a frog to like a mini chompy reptile like other reptile like thing. Um, and it's just a fun way of representing the world and seeing it in a different way. So I feel like it'd be really great to see what other objects you can change into triangles and see how funky they look and if they change the way that you look at that object because that would be really fun. So I hope you enjoyed our first delve into still life um, with our fun object, perhaps you've taken it a step further, however whatever you've done, however far you've got, I would love to see it. So if you share it on social media with a hashtag ArtK online, I'll see it and that'll be wonderful. Um, and to be able to see obviously all our future content, content, do remember to like and subscribe to the channel. Um, but for now, that's it. That's it for this week. And we'll look forward to seeing you on Monday. Bye for now.